Welcome to this video which follows our trips to Lewis and Harris in the Outer Hebrides and a journey back through the Isle of Skye to Glensheel and Fort William. The trip was a mix of off-grid camping and staying on designated campsites, some camping and motorhome club sites and others which were independent or affiliated. We were travelling in our Pilot motorhome with Bella and Molly, our four-year-old Cocker Spaniel and 10 year old Labrador respectively. My father, along with a group of Rover Scouts, visited the Hebrides in the mid-1950s and were even interviewed by the Stornoway Gazette at the time. It would be good to see where they got to and imagine how it would have been back then. Our first night was spent at Eberdour, which is on the north shore of the Firth of Forth. The location by the beach is an ideal free motorhome stopover. After a quiet night, the following morning we set off to drive to Balmoral Castle, travelling part of the journey through the Invercord estate we got our first glimpse of the highlands on this particular journey. We took time to stop and appreciate the views, something you cannot do fully when driving. I had visited the Scottish home of the Royals before, some 30 years ago, but Jenny had not been until now. The estate is vast, and you can wander around the grounds at your leisure. The castle itself is closed to the public, apart from the ballroom, which normally displays an exhibition of some kind. There's a tea room and, of course, the obligatory gift shop. In the courtyard there was a display of some vehicles, a purpose-built Land Rover used on the estate, and also the Duke of Edinburgh's famed barbecue on wheels, almost like he'd stepped out of it that morning. Glenmore campsite near Avimore is to some extent quite basic.
It is a campsite in the woods after all, for caravans, camper vans, motorhomes and tents. But what a location. We travelled on to Ullapool and as it was my birthday, we had a celebratory meal. We chose the ferry boat in as it was quite near the campsite. The following morning we were up and ready to embark on the ferry to Stornoway. The trip takes about two and a half hours and our major concern was how our dogs would react to it as it was their first time. But the crossing was as smooth as a mill pond, which pleased Jenny. After a smooth drive on very good roads, we arrived at Five Penny and our small homely campsite for that night, Uncle's Croft. A typical croft, a strip of land with a house at one end, but this land stretched down to the sea at the other. It was spectacular.
Callany stones are an arrangement of standing stones in a cruciform pattern with a central circle. They date from 2500 BCE and even supersede Stonehenge. We called in at the information and archives in Ness and got a takeaway cappuccino. First impressions normally count, but next to the bins in our next overnight off-grid camp was this. One of Scotland's finest beaches, if not the finest, out with the mainland, is Luskentire. We decided to stay over the following night, only about two miles from the shore. Inevitably, the bad weather eventually came in, wind and rain for 36 hours, and we stayed longer than expected.
Just a few miles away is the next gem, Horgerbost, and an opportunity to stay on a campsite with services and explore a little more since the weather had improved drastically. In Tarbert, we visited the Harris Tweed Shop and ended up spending a little more than we expected. Only went in for a fridge magnet. Time for another ferry to Uig on the Isle of Skye. We arrived in Staffin after a short evening drive. The footage here was from the next morning. Our plans that day were to set off on foot and check out the dinosaur footprints on Anne Corran Beach. They are from the Middle Jurassic period, 170 million years ago.
We left the campsite after two nights and headed south onto Sky. Now on the mainland, we're going to let you enjoy what remains of this video. <laughs> 